Hello viewers, today we are discussing on wetlands. What is wetlands? As per IUCN that is International Union for the Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, all submerged or water situated lands, natural or man-made, inland or coastal, permanent or temporary, static or dynamic, visited or non-visited which are necessarily have a land water interface are called wetlands. But Ramsar Convention used a broad definition of wetlands. Ramsar Convention was held in 1971 in the in an Iranian city Ramsar. As per Ramsar Convention definition, wetlands include all lakes and rivers, underground aquifers, swamps and marshes, wetland, wet grasslands, peatlands, oases, estuaries, deltas and tidal flats, mangrove and other coastal areas, coral reef and all human made sites such as fish pond, rice paddies, reservoirs and salt pans. If you try to understand the wetland importance of the wetlands, we have to go back to the Ramsar's uh, convention again. In 1971, from 1971 on 2nd February every year we are observing the uh, World Wetland Day. If you take the themes of the last 10 years of wetland day, we will find that see the wetlands are very closely related to the river basin management, biodiversity, climate change, forest, what tourism, water management, agriculture, sustainable livelihood, disaster risk reduction, sustainable urban future and many more things. So, many in many areas the wetlands have been found to be very very uh, important. If you see the wetland condition of Assam, the wetlands in Assam are known with various local names such as Bill, Pitoni, Doloni, Zala, Duba, Hola, Gedang, Haur, etc. Bill, Gedang, Haur are lake-like water bodies. Pitoni, Doloni, Zala are primarily swampy areas. Duba, Hola are degraded stream-like water bodies but behave like an active river or a stream during flood season. Almost all the wetlands in the state commonly known as bills. Inland water uh, wetlands could broadly be divided into two categories that is lentic and lotic systems. Lentic wetlands are ponds, lakes, swamps, marshes, etc. In Assam, the bill, pitoni, doloni, zola, etc. are lentic systems. Lotic systems which refers to the running water like rivers and streams. Including the rivers and streams, some of the wetlands originated from abandoned channels of rivers behave like a active river in a rainy season are lotic type. Here is the location of Assam state which is the only plain state in the midst of the hilly states of northeast India. Here you will find the lofty mountains of Bhutan, here you find the mountains of Onasal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur, Trip, Tripura, Mizoram and Meghalaya. So, water from all the states pass through Brahmaputra river and the uh, uh, Assam valley and as a result what happened the many rivers and many wetlands have been formed in this state. In Assam as many as 5097 wetlands are there which size is more than 2.25 hectare and less than that size is 6081 uh, which are scattered all over the plains of Brahmaputra and the Barak valley. The total wetlands area estimated around 7,63,372 hectare that is around 9.74 percent of the total geographical area of the state. Rivers and streams accounting 84 percent of the total wetlands and rest are lentic water bodies such as Bill, Gedeng, Howard, etc. Man-made ponds, waterlogged areas, oxbow lakes are also included in lentic system. If you see the district wise distribution of wetlands, you will find in Sunitpur district 83,427 hectares of wetland areas are there which accounts almost 11 percent of the total wetland areas of the state. On the other hand, in Hailakandi, only 2600 
hectares of wetlands are there which is only accounts only uh, 0.34 percent of the total wetland area of the state. So, that way the wetland area and the number of wetlands varies from state to uh, I mean district to district. In 1991 Assam Remote Sensing Application Center without considering rivers and streams estimated the they have identified the wetlands in which uh, uh, it has been found that the Morigaon district having only 183 wetlands, but see that total area covered the highest that is 11,658 hectares. On the other, other hand, Nogao accounts, Nogao district accounts highest number of wetlands that is 379 and the total area covered is 11,295.5 hectares. Number wise the Dimahasa having the lowest number of wetlands and the area wise the Haila country has the lowest area under wetland category. So, that way the wetland varies from state uh, district to district, but see every district you will find some um, wetlands, wetland areas. As per the Ramsar convention, the wetland have been divided at three levels. In the first level that is inland wetland and the coastal wetland, these two categories are there. Under this natural and man made that is the level 2 that the inland wetlands wetland have been divided into two categories natural and man made and coastal wetlands also divided into two same two categories that is natural and man made. The natural inland wetlands have been divided in at level 3 as lakes, oxbow lakes, cut off meanders, high altitude wetlands, riverine wetlands, waterlogged areas, rivers and streams. Man made wetlands in inland water wetlands, man made wetlands in inland wetland covers that is the reservoir, barrages, tanks, ponds, waterlogged, salt pan, etc. In the same way, the Nessile coastal wetlands covers that is the lagoons, creeks, sand beach, intertidal mud flats, salt marsh, mangrove, coral reefs, etc. Man made coastal wetlands includes the salt pan aquaculture pond etc. If you see the scenery of Assam, you will find that is uh, again is a, it could be divided into natural and man made. Under the natural category lakes and ponds, oxbow lakes, cut off meanders, high altitude wetlands, riverine wetlands, waterlogged wetlands, then see the rivers and streams have been found. In the man made wet category that is reservoirs and the barrages, tanks and ponds and waterlogged areas have been found. So, the distribution pattern is like this that is the altogether the state has 11,178 numbers of wetlands which occupies 7,64,372 hectares of land. If you see the uh, distribution pattern of the wetlands, you will find a different picture say for example, uh, here covers the three districts Morigaon, Hozai and um, Nagao district. So, this part is un falls under Morigao district, this part is in Nagao district, this part in Hozai district. In Hozai district the number of wetlands are very few and also the border area of the Nagao district you will find the minimum less number of wetlands. It is because it is very close to the hilly area of Karbi Anglong district and here the Hozai district is mostly fall in the rain zero zones of the state. So, therefore, the, the number of wetlands are very few here. But the condition of the wetlands is very much uh, there in Murigao district where the lot of rivers, many rivers are there, bills are there, swampy areas are there. So, the distribution pattern is not uniform throughout. The wetlands of Assam could be classified broadly into 5 categories depending on their shape. The first category is the compact type where the land bed ratio is almost same. The another type is fragmented or the discrete type. The, there may be few more few water bodies which have been linked up with some active channels which maintain the water quality and other quality of the wet, uh, all the water bodies and therefore, all these uh, units all these water bodies could be taken as one unit. So, this type of wetland could be called as the fragmented wetland and this is the oxbow lake it is actually this is the river and this Waxbow lake has been is the cut off meander of this river and this type of wetlands are many in the entire Assam. 
The linear type of wetlands have been found where that is the river abandon its original channels. So, this type of linear type of wetlands are uh, uh, quite uh, I mean with this linear type of wetlands are a large in number in entire state. Then said so this irregular type of wetlands have been found normally with the areas where which is surrounded by the hilly tracks. So, this is the depressed area surrounded by the hilly tracks and <coughs> sore areas have been uh, so looks very irregular that is the shore line is very irregular in shape. Then if you see that is the distribution pattern of the wetlands in Assam you will find the linear type of wetlands found to be the highest actually it is depend on the three districts a study on uh, in three districts compact pattern is next to that oxbow lake and discrete and irregular pattern of wetlands have been found like this. So, that this is the size category that is the less than 50 hectares of wetlands have been found in large number. If the size increases the wetland number is also increases accordingly. Second important aspect is this the as you go away from the rivers that is most of the wetlands have been some way related to the rivers adjacent rivers. As you go away from the rivers then you will find that is the number of wetlands have been decreased within 400 meters of uh, from the rivers the wetland number is more that is 34 percent uh, more than 34 percent and see as you go away that is 400 to 800 800 to 1200 uh, meters if you go away from the rivers then see the number of wetlands decreases. So, as a result what happened the 77 percent of the wetlands have been found within 2 kilometers of the rivers in the state and 88 percent of the wetlands found within 3 kilometers from the uh, rivers. So, here you see that if you take the satellite images any of the satellite image of any of the districts of Assam you will find the wetlands like this wetlands are distributed like this. These are all wetlands these are the oxbow lakes clear oxbow lakes and this is the swampy area this area is a swampy area and see you can find you can see that uh, so many numbers of wetlands have been distributed all the wetlands and this is the Brahmaputra river and the white patches are nothing but the sandy soil areas. And see the irregular type of shoreline that is the irregular shoreline that is the irregular type of wetland is found in the state in the hilly in the midst of the hilly tracks. And then see this is the clear example of the Oxbow lake and also that this is these are the linear type of uh, wetland these are the linear type of wetland these are the old channels you can say the pay it is called as the paleo channels that means these this was one at one point of time it was an active channel but now it has been degraded there is no stagnant water is there either it has been converted to agricultural land or it is covered by some other uh, vegetation so like that see the wetland ecosystem in assam is basically depend on uh, many factors that is it contains the both inorganic and organic materials. The primary producers ranges from the phytoplankton to the macrophytes. Most conspicuous producer are the free floating and rooted aquatic angiosperm in shallow water. Primary consumers are various zooplanktons. Second order consumers are small fishes, frogs, rotifers, etc. Predatory birds and the large fishes are the top carnivores in the ecosystem. So, if you why this thing wetlands are um, rich in biodiversity to understand that thing that say we have to see the structure of the wetlands see the wetlands this area is always under water this area is intermittently this is a, uh, occasionally submerged and this area very close to the water body and see it gets this area this soil of this area gets sub get ground water constantly from the wetlands. So, as a result what happened we find three different zones where three different types of vegetation and uh, uh, depending on the vegetation different type of uh, aquatic plants and aquatic animals have been found in three different areas. Say for example, uh, the this area that is the deeper area you will find the free floating submerged plants, the submerged plants, floating plants etc. In this part you will find the emergent plants and in this part short grass, tall grass and the woody forest you will get it. So, therefore, 
as a whole the wetland ecosystem become very rich in biodiversity. So, these are some of the examples of some submerged plants, different type of submerged plants are there, some of the floating plants are there, this is the water lily which is very common in the wetlands of Assam. These are also very common here that is in the Ural Ferox, it is locally called as Mokhona. It is a plant, it is a floating plant that is a, uh, the leaves are uh, just like lotus and see from this the seeds have been extracted which is sold in the market, it is a, uh, has a good market in the uh, entire country. Then see the water hyacinth that is of course, the water hyacinth are now playing a adverse role in uh, wetland productivity of the wetland because see the water hyacinth does not allow the penetration of the sun rays to each bottom level, the wetland uh, bottom. So, therefore, the productivity of the feces and other aquatic life is decreased to a great extent. And this is the you know if you from the water body to the shore area you will find the varieties of plants uh, grown there. Then see if you see the role of the wetlands on the human this thing livelihood support uh, livelihood you will find that say the livelihood support it provides the wetlands provides a livelihood support to the people of the rural areas. This is the agriculture the wet agriculture uh, which is practiced in almost entire state. This is the uh, rural poor, they have collected the uh, pieces from here and it is a good supplement of the protein. And this is the community fishing, this is a unique things in Assam that is particularly the eve of Magbihu, which is a Magbihu is a festival. Uh, before the festival, this uh, community fishing is normally practiced and see this is the unique thing that say the many tourists get attracted for this to see the community fishing in the wetlands of Assam. So, like that see this wetlands provide the livelihood support to the people, not only that this wetlands also provides the grazing uh, household animals that is the provide the opportunities for grazing household animals. Then see the uh, children can learn this is the swimming, driving and this is they can go for recreation like this. Then also the for other purposes for drinking purpose for uh, uh, bathing and for uh, uh, washing clothes the wetland water has been used all over the state. Then see the, if you see the biodiversity here you see this is a common dark you know wetlands are quite often it is called as a dark factory because normally what happened in Assam that is that the many of the dark varieties of uh, birds the uh, birds of dark varieties they come from the Siberia and Tibetan region and from they take shelter in the wetlands and see for that uh, they stay here for not less than 3 months and see they lay eggs here, they make nest there here. So, therefore, the wetlands are quite often called as the dark factory, this is a local dark. But see here you see in Kajinonga, this is from Kajinonga, that these are the rhinos and these are the buffaloes and the other animals also, deer is also there. So, like they see the varieties of the animals is supported by the wetlands. This is the migratory birds that one can see almost in all not only in Kazirunga, in other wetlands also one can see this thing, this scenario. This tall grass and the short grass and the water body, these three are the unique combination for the rhino habitat. So, this is that the tall grass it is taller than the human being that is also this how the wetland have been used by the this thing, the wild animals and the also domestic animals. How the wild animals are using the water bodies and see the how common birds have been seen in the wetlands. Yeah. So, it is very much clear in almost all the states or all the districts of uh, Assam. Then see the if you see the bird variety, let us see uh, these birds are picking up food from the edges and the, the fringe areas of the wetlands. All these are migratory birds. These are this in a uh, greater adjutant stock that is endangered species. It is also supported by the wetlands. These are the migratory birds coming from the Siberia and Tibetan region. These are the common birds in Asiatic wetlands. So, like they say that it, uh, it made a rich biodiversity zone. This is one of the unique thing of course, it is not seen in Assam, it is in Manipur Loktok Lake. That is these are all floating uh, plants. So, this floating plants is becoming so thick that say that one can construct the dwelling houses here. So, these are called fumdis and on the fumdis the huts have been this this type of the fishermen have made this type of huts and see this is the unique thing in the Loktok lake. So, this uh, for this also the many tourists used to come. 
Now coming to the, the fish, fish condition, this is fish production condition of the state. Let us say the bill water of Assam is highly productive, it is scientifically it has been already proved. Naturally, Assam bill water can produce 100 kg of fish per hectare without taking any development measure. Then the, but the water bodies of the rest of the country cannot produce more than 79 kg of fish per hectare per year. In bill, fish productivity can be raised up to 1500 kg per hectare per year. It is also scientifically proved. The Assam importing fishes from states like Andhra Pradesh and UP as many as 700 trucks carrying fishes to, uh, to this uh, from these states every week. So, local fish sold in Assam market at 3 times more than the price of imported fish. Around 90 percent of the people of Assam as well as the Northeast India are fish eaters. The mainly civil caste and civil type people are involved in the fish catches and fish business. But unfortunately what happened the fishing gears are not scientific, not efficient to catch the bottom mud fishes from the bottom mud. Here the wetland condition in the city area, it is the Guwahati area and say one Ramsar site it is very important wetland is there uh, that is deeper bill that is the Ramsar site. The other wetlands in the city are degraded to a great extent. This Ramsar site is also degrading day by day. This is deeper bill and say this deeper bill this light blue color indicates that is it is uh, turbidity is very high that means the solid waste which has been uh, carried by the rivers and the uh, runoff surface runoff is deposited in the wetland and thereby the squeezing the thereby the reducing the wetland area of the uh, of deeper bill. So, why deeper bill is so important that see that if you see the uh, plant species the 14, 14 free floating hydrophytes are there 18 submerged suspended hydrophytes are there. 10 submerged anchored hydrophytes, 9 floating leaved anchored hydrophytes, 5 floating soot anchored hydrophytes, 29 emergent anchored hydrophytes, 36 swamps, marsh and wetland hydrophytes are there. So, that way the so many varieties of species, so many species I mean plant species are there that see which enrich the quality of the uh, deeper bill. But on the other hand if you see the land use map of this wetland, now if, uh, if you compare from 1977 to 2014 you will find this uh, the how much of pressure it, uh, it bears that means uh, how the encroachment is going on or the settlement is uh, developed surrounding the wetland. So, this red patch is showing the built up area. So, the red is very coming very close to the wetlands. So, now you see that by 2014 almost all sites have been covered by the wetland I mean uh, built up area from which the lot of waste solid and liquid waste have been released to the wetland and thereby the quality of the water is degraded day by day. But on the other hand the same type of wetland found in the rural areas have not affected that way as the poor bill is deteriorated. This is the scenario of Kaziranga National Park. The, here you see the tall trees, the grassland and the wetland these three are geographical unit actually is the best combination for the rhino habitats. So, here uh, these wetlands are also affected because of the fringe areas where that is the agricultural lands have been extending towards the wetland then see the built up areas are there, tea gardens are there from which the uh, agricultural waste and the tea garden waste have been released to the uh, water bodies and thereby in the fringe areas the water quality of the depot uh, Kaziranga National Park is deteriorating day by day. That is say according to WWF India that is the wetlands of India has been deteriorated due to the loss of vegetation, salinization, excessive inundation, water pollution, invasive species, excessive development of the road and building etcetera. But if you see the why the Assam wetlands of Assam have been deteriorated you will find the inorganic bottom deposit that is say that is the sediments because of the deforestation and other activities the sediments have been carried by the rivers to the wetland and it has been deposited at its bottom. Organic bottom deposits that is the water hyacinth and other plants which have been uh, uh, after decomposed uh, it has been deposited at the bottom of the wetland. The blockade of the feeder channel it will be discussed later then unscientific construction of engineering structures like say for example roads, uh, railway lines then embankments 
which uh, cause lot of degradation that is cause deterioration of the water uh, of wetlands. Then see the encroachment for different development of different uh, infrastructures and cultivation in the marginal areas also cause deterioration of the wetlands. The release of the industrial and urban waste is very dangerous to the wetlands. There are some pictures it is shown here. Here see the, with, uh, the building have been constructed in the wetlands. The earth filling is going on the wetlands. The how the, the garbage uh, the with uh, urban and the solid waste, industrial waste have been dumped in the uh, wetlands. You can see it from here. Unscientific fishing and fishing methods and gears is also responsible for the deterioration of the wetlands. The poor governance as of now the in Assam the four different types of uh, the four different departments control the wetlands. So, the all the wetlands uh, some of the wetlands have been, are found under the revenue department, some wetlands found under forest department, some are the forest fishery development corporation, some in the under fishery development. So, this is it becomes a no man's business. So, as a result the wetlands have been deteriorated day by day. This is the condition of the feeder signal. Normally, what happens you know that is in the during the gravid fishes when they like to uh, lay their eggs, they cannot lay their eggs in the fast flowing rivers. So, therefore, the most of the gravid fishes enter the wetland through the feeder channels. This is the wetland. So, here they the fishes lay eggs and the, the fishes when grown up it goes back to the river again. Some of the fishes remain there, thereby the auto stocking process of the fishes in the wetlands is continued. But see because of the blockade of the wetland, because of the construction of uh, uh, roads, railways and the embankments and the agricultural practices in the wetland in the dry season. So, ultimately deteriorates the quality of the feeder signal or in virtually this feed, uh, uh, the, uh, the links between the wetlands and the rivers have been uh, cut off because of the uh, death of the feeder channels. So, the, the feeder channels are quite often called as the lifeline of the lifeline of the wetlands, but now these have been delinked and therefore, the wetland quality has been deteriorated day by day. Then say the as a solution that say desiltation could be uh, carried out. And see the desiltation works in Deporville. This is a few pictures of the desiltation works in Deporville. Let us see the how this thing the uh, sediments have been removed from the Deporville and it has been dumped in the surrounding areas. So, that way the roads have been constructed like embankments have been constructed like this, the plantation have also been made, thereby the further encroachment could be stopped and also the water, uh, water depth could be maintained. So, that way the some of the wetlands could be easily developed in the state and this is the unique picture of that is the natural process by which the water quality of the wetlands could be purified. This is from nature park of Kolkata. So, here the dark uh, drain water have been entered in this tank is a settlement tank where the sediments have been deposited there at the bottom and this a floating meters have been removed from this point. Then see the, from the uh, uh, shallow channel that is water goes to the next thing. Here that is in this well it moves to the next channel this uh, sunlight can penetrate to its bottom thereby it purifies the water. So, that way it goes to the next channel where some fishes have been kept. These fishes are not for human consumption. It is it is for to purify it, these fishes have been used to purify the water and also to monitor the, the quantity of uh, oxygen in the water body. So, then, then the water is purified to a some extent, then it goes to the next thing where some of the submerged plants have been there uh, which absorb the grease and other oily substances from the water body. And thereby it is uh, to a some extent the grease and water body uh, oily substance have been removed and then it goes to the next thing where the this water hyacinth have been kept. This water hyacinth, the roots of the water hyacinth can absorb the heavy metals like mercury. Uh, lead etcetera. So, they, that way the by natural process the water has been purified and you will get that crystal clear water here and see it has been released to the in the fish ponds where the fishes have been uh, this thing cultured here and see the more than 100 families of the uh, in the surrounding area sub, uh, is supported by this fish ponds. So, that this is the success story uh, in our country. So, that way we can develop. So, many of the countries have developed the constructed wetlands. 
So, this is some of the pictures have been taken from internet and see this is the uh, uh, thereby they have improved the condition of the wetland. The one unique example is they are the constructed wetland in Bharatpur, India. For to Bharatpur many tourists used to come because Bharatpur is known to the world as a bird national park. So, like this in Malaysia Putrajaya wetland is also very famous constructed wetland. So, these are the acts and the legislation to conserve the wetlands uh, in the, our country. But uh, the main problem lies here the enforcement of the law that is we, the slackness in enforcing the law ultimately caused the deterioration of the wetland. The, we have the provisions, but see we are not enforcing it properly. In Assam that see the, we can develop the wetland based activity some, the some of the wetlands could be preserved as the biodiversity conservation pool. Some of the wetlands could be used as the environmental quality control machine and many of the wetlands could be developed into fisheries and the, some of the wetlands where the endangered species are there or the rare species are there, birds and animals are there. So, these wetlands could be and scenic beauties also there, these wetlands could be developed as tourist spots and thereby we can earn lot of people, I mean earn lot of money and also we can employ a lot of people in the uh, uh, wetland based industries. So, how to conserve? Let us say the wetlands should be classified scientifically shape wise, size wise, area wise, location, water quality, biodiversity richness, etc. Then there is a strict conservation strategy needed for wetland rich in biodiversity. Then next thing is that some of the wetlands could be developed as a tourist, tourism promotion, some wetlands should be developed as fisheries and all wetlands should be bring under single management authority then only we can expect some uh, wetland based I mean economic development in the state. Thank you.